and welcome back. In the previous video, we looked at various memory options for this relay computer, and even experimented with some capacitor memory before building a new memory board using a much more modern approach. And we're almost at the point where this relay computer can start to execute a program. But before it can, one of the things it will need is a program counter. So this is the completed program counter board, and I know it doesn't look completed because it's missing a bunch of relays here, but that's because as I was building it, I realized that I don't need these data bus gating relays here. I'm only interested in using these address bus gating because the program counter only interacts with the address bus. So I've saved a few relays there. I got a little overzealous putting in the diodes uh, beforehand, but you know maybe I can reuse this card uh, later on as maybe one of the X or Y registers. So really the next step now is to configure this card to make it think that it is a program counter. And to do that, I need to connect these lines that attach to the bus to the control lines on the register itself. So now I'm at the point where we'll need to get the next instruction from memory and store it in the instruction register. But this new instruction register works differently than the generic registers mainly because it needs to feed the instruction back to the dedicated instruction lines on the system bus. And this is the point where I want to experiment before committing to a PCB design. And while breadboards have been doing the job up to this point, I can only fit seven relays per breadboard. And by looking at the number of relays on a typical card, it's easy to see just how complicated things would get. So I'm going to leverage the concept of prototyping boards which have been around for a very long time. But I'm also going to borrow an advantage from breadboards, and that is by having all of the components, connections, and wiring on the top side of the board, which should make it easier to build, and also to change connections and, and debug components when needed. This is the new prototype card, and at first glance, I think it turned out amazing. At least from what I can see, everything's in the right spot, including my dip dot logo, so that's pretty cool. I did a gold-plated edge card connector at the bottom, and this is the only card I've done this on so far, and it's just because it's more durable than the ones I've been using previously, and that should be good because this card is meant to be taken in and out of the computer quite often. So I'll start off with the bottom set of pins here, and these represent all of the connections on the edge card, both the front and the back. And on the left hand side, I have these connectors A and B that are connected to A and B on this IDC connector port here. This would be for putting diodes in, for example, if I wanted to just make sure that data was only flowing one way, either I guess in or out of the card. And on the right side of the card, we have our usual banks of LEDs and supporting resistors. And these header pins will be the connections for all of those LEDs on the right hand side. So now we get into where we're going to populate the relays. And in this case, we can have up to 32 relays on this card, which is actually quite a bit. And you'll note that the headers on the left and right of the relays are only pinned to the locations that correspond with the pinout on the relays themselves. And that's going to make it pretty handy. So I've got an example here of a header where I've removed some of the pins and it just fits perfectly in there. And those pinouts would correspond with the pins on the relays. And for each relay, I'm also going to have a socket and that will again make it easy for me to be able to populate the relays in and out of the card as I need to.
This is the completed prototype for the instruction register card, and it's kind of rat's nest looking in parts, but this is the nature of wire wrapping, and I think it has a certain mad science charm to it. It has these eight relays that represent the eight bits of this one byte register, and at the top we have our load and select relays, and to the right of those we have these four gating relays, each of which controls two of the one bit relays below. And from the system bus, we are providing 5 volts, the LIN or load instruction control line, and then jumping over here are the inputs from the data bus. And once the register is loaded with a value, it's directly fed to these LEDs, and also to the 8 lines that will pass the instruction value to the decoder and controller cards later on. Now testing for this card is really straightforward, and we certainly won't need an Arduino for this part. Just a few jumpers to test each bit of the register, and then confirm that the instruction output lines are doing what they should be doing. Here we have the finished instruction register. And I paused there for a bit because it's not really finished, it's still in prototype format, but it's workable for our next steps. And that is to create some microcode that will fetch the next instruction from memory and load it into this instruction register so that it can be decoded and executed. And that process is quite common across pretty much all computers out there, at least as far as I know. Um, sometimes it's referred to as the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Sometimes it's just the fetch cycle. I'm going to refer to it as the instruction fetch cycle. Our instruction fetch cycle starts with selecting the program counter, which places that value on the 16-bit address bus. We then perform a memory read, which uses that address bus value as a pointer to select the correct byte from memory and onto the 8-bit data bus. And while keeping those first two control lines engaged, we then activate the load instruction register line to load our next instruction. Now at this point, we have our instruction register loaded, so we could start executing it, but since we have the program counter value on the address bus, we can take this opportunity to increment that value to be ready for the next instruction fetch cycle. And thankfully, the incrementer is always doing its job of incrementing whatever is on the address bus. So we just need to first load this incremented value to the increment register, and then select that register to the address bus so it can then be loaded to the program counter and be ready for the next instruction fetch cycle. And now that this cycle is done, we can continue with the decoding and execution of our newly loaded instruction. In addition to the prototyping board, I've also designed this new prototyping backplane. And this card connects to the main backplane using the two 64-pin IDC connectors. And once the prototyping board is installed, it can then be laid flat, which should make it a lot easier to make changes and perform any testing and debugging without the need to constantly pull and reinsert this board from the relay computer. The backplane is looking a little more crowded than usual as we're finally filling all five slots. And starting at the very back, we have our incrementer, our sequencer, our new program counter, the memory card, and last but not least, we have our new instruction register with the added instruction fetch cycle microcode. This Arduino setup is a bit different as it's really just being used as a program loader. Now, in this case, we're not loading a program yet, mainly because we don't have the hardware needed to decode or execute instructions. So in this case, I'm just using it to quickly load the values of 0 through 16 into the first 16 memory locations. And once that's done, the program counter will be set to 0, and then I'm going to disconnect the Arduino, and then manually reset the sequencer and start the clock. And if all goes well, we should see that this clock is stepping the sequencer and those pulses are then driving the instruction fetch cycle to pull the next value from memory and load it into the instruction register, which we should see here. 
And when it's done, the microcode just finishes off by incrementing the program counter to the next cycle, and then the process just repeats. All right, so now those first 16 memory addresses are loaded with the 0 through 16 values. And I'm now going to press the reset that resets the sequencer. And then we're going to press the clock start button. And there we go. We're seeing the first instruction. And actually, it's the second instruction because the first one was zero. So now we're on to two. And if all goes well, we should see the first two LEDs lit. And excellent. So this is so far so good. It's early on, but we should now see the third LED. This is amazing. Okay, so. Let it run a couple more cycles just to confirm. This is fantastic. So I'm really, really happy with this. And the very next steps now, I mean, I've got a lot of room left over on this prototype board. And in fact, I think I only need about four uh, relays just to do the actual instruction decoding. And once that's done, I can use this remaining row at the top just to populate it maybe with a couple of test instructions. So that would be for another day. So right now, I'm just really, really happy that this is actually running. This is a big milestone. So really, really thrilled. This thing is getting crowded. And I've used up all the space on this backplane, and I haven't even included these two registers yet. But fortunately, I have four more of these backplane cards that I can daisy chain together using those same 64 pin ribbon cables that I used for the prototyping backplane card previously. And now we have the foundation to create some of the instruction set. And I've started to noodle around with some ideas as to how that will work. But the cool thing is that now I can use these prototype cards to experiment with the instruction microcode before committing to a PCB design. And there's still so much fun to be had with this machine, like building the ALU and adding some jump and branching capabilities. But I'm also really excited about starting on the enclosure and front panel, which I'm going to make sure has lots of blinking lights and toggle switches. So with that, thank you so much for watching and please keep it up with your amazing feedback in the comments. And we'll catch up in the next episode.